every video game genre explained in no particular time or less because i think that's a dumb titling format and i don't want to put constraints on myself before i even start the damn video 10 minutes or less action action games are well pretty self-explanatory characterized by intense often combat filled gameplay and rapid hand-eye coordination action games requires the player's full attention while engaging rewarding those who are quick on their feet and punishing those who can't keep up basically this isn't for casual gamers Action games typically consist of some sort of leveling system for the player to gradually and gradually improve with until it ends with some variation of a finale. Notable games in this genre would include Assassin's Creed, Doom, Resident Evil, and of course, Temple Run. Again, not for the casual game. Adventure. Adventure games are a bit more free with letting the player decide how they themselves want to play the game. Usually story-driven single-player games, the adventure genre allows the user to decide how they want to interact with the game's given world. Whether you want to grind missions back to back or just mosey on along the map and smell the flowers, it's really however you want to collaborate. Some common elements are puzzle solving, gathering and use of items, and an overarching story or theme. Great examples would be Skyrim, Red Dead Redemption, and Fallout. Horror. Horror games come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, but all in some way or another are trying to scare or shock the player. Can you run in this game? You can <laughs> the horror genre as far as gaming goes is a rare exception where it's defined not by its gameplay at all, but defined by its narrative and intentions. Whether it's a realistic, Saw-style multiplayer tournament filled with slick controls and detailed gore, or a spooky-themed Candy Crush, if it is trying to invoke fear in some way, it is a horror game. Outlast, Silent Hill, Amnesia, and Five Nights at Freddy's are some good examples that display just how different games in this genre can vary. RPG RPG stands for role-playing games, where a player is assumed a given character to control and act out within the game's given narrative. This can be through action or a pre-structured character development model with variations depending on the player's choices. Either way, there are usually some sort of rules and regulations put in place to assure the gameplay still runs smoothly. There's also a multitude of different subgenres in the RPG sphere. Some popular ones are TRPGs or table role-playing games, LARP or live action roleplay, and JRPGs Japanese role-playing games for all my fellow weebs. Great RPG games would be Diablo, Persona, and Fire Emblem. Definitely not a personal favorite subgenre of video games, but hey, that could just be me. Strategy. Similarly to action games, strategy games require the player's full attention while playing, but unlike action games, quick-witted, zero patience, rapid response time, strategy games incentivizes the player to really think out and plan what they're going to do. Strategy invites critical thinking skills and calculated moves to be successful, often with a one-on-one, -on -one outplay your opponent mechanic, where only with superior planning may you be victorious. StarCraft, XCOM 2, and of course, chess are all some popular examples. Fighting. Fighting games are kinda like if action and strategy games had a fast-paced, badass mutant child. They consist of either timed or stocked physical showdowns between one or many opponents that end with one player or a team defeating the others. Combat is always the center focus in these games, so techniques such as blocking, grappling, and comboing are all commonplace elements. Awesome games of this genre would be Tekken, Street Fighter, and a personal favorite game of mine, Super Smash Bros. Puzzle games. Puzzle is admittedly a pretty broad genre of video games that, in one way or another, all involve problem-solving skills and pattern recognition. Players are put through logical trials that can either require quick thinking or formulated plays to be effective. Many games involve puzzle-solving factors, but unless that is the sole basis for the game, it wouldn't fall under the puzzle genre. Portal, Captain Toad, and another personal favorite, Tetris, are all wonderful examples. Racing. Racing games are any games that revolve around driving as the core mechanic for gameplay. Like puzzle games, just because racing is a common element in the game does not necessarily make it a part of the genre, so no, GTA is not a racing game. 
games can vary from depictions of real-life drag racing to a fictional universe filled with fantasy elements. Examples of actual racing games would be Forza Horizon, Mario Kart, and Gran Turismo. Sports Sports games are all games centered around any particular physical activity. Sports games usually take an already real-life established sport and refine it into a virtual substitution that one or many people can play more leisurely. Although the sport already pre-existing isn't a necessary requirement for a game to be under the sports genre. I'm looking at you, Rocket League. They can either emphasize on the physical side of the given sport, or emphasize on the more strategic aspects involved, or some combination of both. Madden, 2K, and FIFA are all great examples. Shooter Shooter games are easily some of the most popular and competitive video games in prevalence currently. Consisting of various types of weapons and machinery, shooter games involve the player plowing down groups of either computer or simultaneous player enemies. This style of game tests player spatial awareness, reflexes, and cognitive motor skills in order to gun down the given opposition. Grenades, ammo packs, and various armor are all customary features that are built in so when acquired, give the user a leg up on the competition. Great games of this genre include Call of Duty, CSGO, Overwatch, and of course, Fortnite. Don't pick me Platformer. Platformer games, also commonly called jump and run games, basically revolves around the player dodging various obstacles presented to get from the start point to the end point. These games are typically displayed as 2D side scrollers, but there are plenty of great 3D renditions in the genre as of the modern day. Typically, these games tend to be very dynamic and test a player's reflexes and timing with the given controls. Levels with various terrains and exclusive enemies are almost always omnipresent in the genre, as well as power-ups which aid the player to defeat said foes. Really, the only example I'd have to include is Mario, as this is unquestionably the godfather for platformers both new and old. Simulation In general, simulation games are any games that are trying to mimic real-life activities as accurately as possible while still remaining entertaining. Unlike most other gaming genres, simulation games typically lack any type of conventional objective, allowing the player to really control the environment freely. I do want to make a distinction between these and adventure games because while on paper they may sound very similar, the core intent of both genres are very different. Simulation games are more so used for casual low-stakes entertainment that don't really follow a narrative or structure. Examples would be The Sims, Animal Crossing, and pretty much any game that has simulation in the title. Survival Survival games involve the player vigorously trying to defend themselves against a world caving in on them, constantly trying to have them killed. Generally, players spawn in with little or no material and interact with the said domain to gather and upgrade their equipment to live to see another day. Often set in open world environments, players are plagued with common problems like hunger, thirst, and energy maintenance which, if left untreated, can all spell death for the player. These games encourage users to be creative, incentivizing exploration and expanding upon their surroundings but all within the confines of staying alive. Resource management is also an integral aspect of what makes these types of games tick. Arc Survival, Rust, Don't Starve Together, and Minecraft would be some examples. Sandbox The term sandbox is derived from the nature of a literal children's sandbox where anything was possible just with a little imagination. Sandbox games provides the players with a vessel to implement their own creativity and use the engine to do whatever they wish to do with it. With no objective and no rules, a sandbox game is really just an instrument to design whatever your heart may desire. Granted, there may be certain rules and regulations implemented into the game if devs want to introduce some aspect of difficulty, but a sandbox game at the end of the day is really just what you, the player, make of it. Roblox, Factorio, and Gary's Mod are all some fun examples. 
Educational. Unlike literally every other game genre, Education Games objective isn't solely to entertain the players, but instead to in some way teach them something. And that doesn't mean educational games can't be fun or aren't trying at all to entertain, that's not the case at all, it's just not the ultimate goal of these type of games. Gaming is a super interactive and more importantly effective way to get someone to legitimately learn something and games of this genre have shown to be great tools for teaching. The Oregon Trail, Duolingo, and ugh, ABC Mouse are all wonderful examples. Actually no, we're not doing that, fuck ABC Mouse, I will never forgive you for what you did to my child. But yeah, that's about gonna wrap things up, um, if I didn't include any genre, it's probably because they don't matter and probably fucking suck, so yeah, I'll see you guys.